This is episode 196 of the Super League pod, and this is the Challenge Cup final recap show. We'll give you an insight on what it was like for a big Dragons fan on the day, as well as what it was like for a Dragon fan for the day, plus loads of your fan reviews. Fixo els cinturons de segritat, it's SLP time. Hello listeners, welcome to episode 196 of the Super League pod. That means we're just four more, this one and four more away from 200, um, Alan, which is is coming up in in a second. And I'm your regular host, Mark, for those people who are new listening to the show um, after the Challenge Cup final weekend, which is going to be the main part of the show that we look back on. I'm your regular host, Mark. I'm joined in the rotating co-host chair this week by Alan, uh, Bradford fan Alan. So how are you, Alan? Yeah, yeah, I'm really well, thank you. Yeah, I was I was Castland fan for the day, um, with my proudly wearing my uh, Michael Brown's t-shirt. Um, so yeah, no, it was um, yeah, it was a really good day, and yeah, it was um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that later, obviously. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm really well. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, it's been a while since you've been on. There was no Bradford game this weekend, but since you were on, Bradford have slipped a little bit. They're now second we in the have. league. We have. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, it, and it doesn't look like our um, secret master plan to get get promoted regardless has paid off, if, if the conspiracy theorists are to be believed. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it, it, oh, God, it's, it, obviously Workington have, have figured us out this year, haven't they? Uh, they, they know how to play us. Um, I'm, I'm hoping they can they can do us a favour and, <laughs> and do the same to York this weekend. Um, but no, I mean, we, yeah, you, you can't complain about the games really. Um, certainly, we we we, des- we didn't deserve to, to beat them. They 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 well deserved the two points. So, well, whilst so, we yeah, have and, no, and whilst we have no Bradford game to talk about, we do have a League One game to talk about in the other results section. So probably when we get round to that, we'll talk a little bit about this restructuring situation that may be going yes. on. Um, Let's do that. At the, at the League One level. So we'll, we'll get on to that a little bit later on. For the normal listeners to the show, this show is going to have a little bit of a different order to things, but it's the kind of the order we follow after big finals, big matches. We're going to start um, shortly with the cup final match review. We're going to speak to James, who's a Catalan Dragons fan, and then we're going to go through all your inputs, including one from... Um, a man who was in the game so la- la- <laughs> nice to see that the parody uh, the parody <laughs> reviews are still going strong it's so alive and well <laughs> we'll get to those uh, in a little while as well the news will come up after we've talked about the results and then we'll predict what we think is going to happen next week in, in rugby league there's a couple of potentially huge games going on um, down the structure so we'll get to all of that later on um just the only other thing to mention at the top of the show really is i I covered before that we're only four episodes away from episode 200 still sort of trying to finalize some details about what i can try and do to make to to add a bit of um special touches into episode 200 and one of the ideas that's been suggested is you the wonderful listeners maybe get in touch and record a little quick story of how you came across Super League Pod your favourite episodes or your favourite memories from listening to the show, following the show uh, through all the social media platforms and that sort of stuff, so I think that's a really great idea if people want to do that record a little clip of yourself talking about your favourite memories and that sort of stuff and then um, from the from the previous 200 shows or 199 shows um, as we'll get to at that point and then email that, that over to us superleaguepod at gmail.com and then we can uh, I can edit those together maybe if we get a few in and slip those into episode 200 as well because um, it is you know it is for the fans it is about the fans and the listeners views are what makes this show different to lots of other shows so um, so please do get in touch with those sorts of contributions and uh, tell your SLP family stories okay Alan that is all we've got to start the show with we're going to move quickly this week on to the meat of the show which is the cup final match review (laughs) 
Okay, so Cup Final Match Review now, sponsored by Rob's Toy Shop on eBay. Find a wide, find a wide range of toys, gifts, rugby league birthday cards and more at Rob's Toy Shop on eBay. Visit stores.ebay.co.uk forward slash Rob's Toy Shop. And on any orders over £5, you can earn 5% cash back and also 1% of your order value will come to SLP if you just put SLP discount at checkout. Okay, so it was the Challenge Cup Final, Alan. It was. It finished. Catalan Dragons 20, Warrington Wolves 14. It was 14-6 at half-time. So the, the Wolves narrowly won the second half but didn't win it enough. Um, in front of just over 50,000, 50,672 in attendance. Me and you would be that too, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> Robert Hicks is the man with the whistle. And I don't think we're going to talk huge amounts about Robert Hicks as we go through this as well so that suggests he had a decent game um before we get to all of your listener fan reviews in the normal way as is tradition now when it comes to major finals we're going to start with the views from a catalan dragons fan um james who is giving up his time to talk about the tension of the big day so as is the super league pod tradition after a big major final we have a fan of the winning side on and i'm uh, delighted to be joined by James from Sangeor.com, the uh, RL Fans Forum for the Catalan Dragons. James, welcome to SLP and congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on. It's uh, Yeah, it's, uh, it's a big surprise. Big surprise, I have to say. So obviously people have just realised that James and your accent is not particularly South of France based. I, I can do one. I can try. <laughs> <laughs> but how... how just before we get into like the game day and all of that sort of stuff, how did you get into the Dragons? How, how are they your club? Um, well, despite living in Lincolnshire, I've never really... I still don't understand the rules of the other sort of rugby. Um, so <laughs> my missus and I, we were over at Dad's Got a House near Girona. We went over one Easter. The, the, we went to Perpignan for the day. Catalans were playing Huddersfield, I think. And the atmosphere in the square and everything was brilliant. We got sucked in. And then we just started following them and, and going to games over here. Um, and in, in my sins at 42, I took up like uh, touch and pass. So uh, yeah. I coach a team uh, down here as well, the Yaxley Yaks, who play uh, who play six tackle rugby. So um, yeah, we, we've we've got into it from there, and 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 we love it. Brilliant. So obviously. Saturday, the second time that the, the Dragons have been in the Challenge Cup final, but the first time they've won. I mean, how, how did it feel watching the game as a Catalan fan? Did, did you quite, first of all, believe that you'd made another final after the, the way the season had started this year? And then take me through how you felt during the sort of early part of the game, that try really right at the start. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you automatically think they've scored too early. Um, even, he, you know, Tierney, he's got, he's got the big game he's got big game scores in him. The, the, the million pound game, which was the last prob- like proper time I was stressed watching them was, um, <laughs> was, was another example of Tierney. He pretty much, you know, he scored, I think he's put a pair in that, as, uh, you know, in that game of tries. And so I, I, it made me feel good, but I realized there was, there was quite a long way to go. Um, and I don't think drink water started that impressively. And I know people have, have given him good scores, but I thought he was really quiet on the day. And that started me like getting edgy as well. Yeah, I mean the first, the first twenty minutes or so of the game, you must have been growing in confidence though, because it felt like, to me, um, as, a, as a neutral who was leaning towards the Dragons, I must admit, it, it felt like every collision, every impact was being won by the Dragons, and every bounce of the ball was going to them because they were keener to get to it, basically. Yeah, um, and and that that was kind of reminiscent of the of the St Helens game where, and I can't believe I'm saying these words. We blew them away before half time, um, but but you always got the feeling, and sometimes you get the feeling with Catalans that that they they're going to do something really stupid, and <laughs> and then once they've done one thing really stupid, that tends to lead to three or four things really stupid, and and games get away with them. And, and it only you takes know, one of them to lose the heads, normally, doesn't it? For all of them to lose their heads, yeah. And they all go fading in, and and that you know that that could have happened, but I thought in the first half especially, uh, they kept the discipline. Of all of those stats about the fact they completed every set as well. Um, and they got the kicks off as well towards the end, and they were turning the ball over in the right the right area of the park, really, weren't they? Because Warrington were going to have to do something really spectacular and break the line a lot more than they actually did to uh, to to get to our end of the field. And I think the couple of times they did kind of get through in the first half, the cover was was such 
that, that, that they, you know, they didn't make the meters, you know, necessary. And we I suppose we could talk about the disallowed drive, but, you know, I don't think that they got through and, and really exposed us in the way that quite a lot of teams did very early in the, very early in the season. And, you know, if, I suppose if you'd have asked me at Easter, if I thought, you know, when, when it, the driving rain and getting 40 put on us at Salford, if I thought we'd get to the Challenge Cup final, I'd have, I'd have probably called you an ambulance because it, it never looked like. <laughs> I, 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 I agree. Um, what, so when Ben, da- ben, ben Murdoch Missile had scored, it probably felt like it was against the play somewhat. It did, but it did. <laughs> and, and I suppose as neutral, you, you've kind of got a better perspective of the game than someone who's kind of really 100% emotionally attached. To me, it felt like it had been coming for about five minutes. You know, they'd have to try this allowed. They were just starting to shift that they were picking up the ball just their side of half ray rather than, you know, 20 metres out from from their post. So it felt like they were just starting to shift us around the pitch a little bit. And again, as soon as Asti did his 20-minute burst and, and once he was off for that little well-deserved rest, um, y- you felt that, that that was the time really that Warrington were going to target us. But it was even before half-time, they started you know, dropping the ball and knocking it on. And I think looking back, if I'd have had a hindsight head or a, a logical head on, I would have thought, yeah, they're going to keep dropping that. And, you know, that's just how their, their mindset is or how they're set up, you know, and how they're going to play. But in my mind, I kept thinking at some point they're going to catch one of these and, and go over. Yeah, I mean, from my perspective as a neutral, I I, I thought that Warrington barely had a, a real sniff of the of the Catalan line every time they, they tried to do something, it was breaking down, whereas Catalan were winning those collisions. So I, I probably did feel like you deserved to be on top and it was against the run of play. But like you say, I wasn't quite as emotionally invested as you were. When Ben Garcia went over and it went up to the video ref, Ben Garcia's done this a lot. Um, and probably surprises people when he dives over from dummy half because he's not a natural dummy half player. But I mean, what what were your feelings when it went up as a as a try? Did you feel like confident? Uh, to be honest, it didn't look like a try, did it, on first viewing? But the, I mean, the for once, and I'm sure every team has a has a Ben Thaler moment. We've had a few um, down the years, and I thought there's no way he'd give that. Um, but it, it, it was a try. It was definitely a try. And like you say, it was a great little step and, and he was almost going one way and the ball was going the other. So it, it was good. And, and for me, actually, I think probably Garcia and Casti were probably better bets for the Lance Todd trophy than uh, than, than Tone in the end. Um, but that's just, the, that's the, you know, I, 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 like a, I like a player who's going to trundle the ball up the middle and, and try and be a bowling ball rather than... Uh, Rather than the delicate kicks, but um, well, to, to uh, that yeah, end, last year I thought, yeah, to that end at half time, I thought Julian Busquet was as good as any Catalan player. I mean, the yardage he was making when he was carrying the ball, he was winning every single collision. He was a real handful, and he was drawing yeah. a lot of men in. It was cre- Catalan probably didn't create that much space with the ball that they had. It was more about that physical edge to the game. But every time he had the ball, it felt like the next play there was some space. Yeah, I think, and I think that probably. That effort he put in in the first half probably told sort of 65 to 75 minutes because I think he was the one that started the, the, that little run of penalties that Warrington had with, uh, you know, a clumsy high shot. And yeah, I think the forwards tired really dramatically towards the end. And I think that's 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 probably testament to the amount of effort they put in that that sort of 20 minutes either side of half time because at half time. And then to get the try pretty much straight, you know, one in each minute of you know, well, first minute of each half. Again, your logical brain says you're home and dry at, at 20 points to six, but my my uh, my brain was was never quite switched <laughs> off or relaxed. That. Well, the one true, the one real champagne moment from the Catalan Dragons was the 40-20 from Tony Gigo, which probably went a huge way to winning him that last try. He made quite a lot of meters in the first half, but in the second half, that that 40-20 in particular um, was game cha- game defining it, it gave you the field position for Gigo to put that nice little ball up for Braden Willie Army to, to roll through um, what looked like a really well executed set, set play move not too much uh, hassle going on there so at 20 points to 6 what are you feeling at that stage I mean at half time I said to the, the, the missus we were like sat, and, sat down in our seat and we were like right okay next try wins this even, even though we got it I still think <laughs> Well, it's still just about enough, just about enough time. I mean, again, you, you, it, it was you're right. The the forty twenty was great, and and he's got that as well as you know he'll probably be his, his 
biggest YouTube moments, that brilliant step in his own in goal area and see you later against Warrington a couple of years ago, wasn't it? That that he's, he's probably remembered. 